How doing? My name is Daniel Root, and uh, I'm going to just go over a brief, uh, a brief description to help you identify sassafras. Uh, this here is a, is a small sassafras sapling. It has very distinctive leaves, where you have almost the trident or three-lobed leaf. They also have uh, a mitten-shaped leaf, and then there's leaves that don't have any lobes on them at all. And these can grow from four to six inches. You can find very large ones. Uh, there are also, there's no serrations on them. The leaves kind of have a green bluish color to them. Uh, in the fall, they turn a bright, deep crimson red or orange color, which can also help, help you ID them. Uh, they do have kind of a dark green bluish fruit, which there's none on this tree at the moment. And, and the bark is very distinctive as well. It's kind of a blocky brown color. And both the bark and the leaves are very aromatic. Uh, the leaves kind of have, to me, it smells like Fruit Loops, and the bark is kind of a more spicier uh, kind of smell to it. Where you can find them is on on lower, mid to lower slopes, very uh, productive, very moist areas is where you can find them. Uh, they're kind of partial shade to full to full sunlight is where you find them. Uh, a lot of them grow. I mean, they can grow from You'll see quite a bit of them in this size, but they can also get to large. The ones I've seen, they can get up to at least 30 to 40 inches in diameter and, and upwards of 100 feet in the, in the air. Frequently you see them along disturbed areas like fence rows or right of ways and things that are very small as, as they grow. And they, most of the time you'll find them, they're kind of mid to, uh, reaching the upper canopy they're not really the dominant tree you'd see on a site but they're they're kind of in the mid-story area is where you find them uh, a lot of times you'll find them on cut trails along the hillsides and, and such